Highlander 1, Highlander 2, and Highlander 3. I'm not talking about the TV series, I'm talking about the three movies that was made, but the first one was that the Highlander would be immortal. The Highlander is nothing but the more. Would be immortal, and he would go through time into a gathering in a faraway land. Now at that time, they was talking about Europe, that the Highlander, that was the more in Europe, but either they had, they, but it's the same thing even when they were in Kemet. They would gather together at the end times in a faraway land. That faraway land is America. And the lost found nation of America, black people here. Not the Caribbean, not Africa, but here. Well, now, what does that mean? Does it mean that the Caribbean don't have anything to do with this? No. We are all one entity. We are all one, all one entity, with, entity with the African, with the all black diaspora, Caribbean all, but we are the ones that was privy to get the knowledge. No one else has received the kind of knowledge we have received over the past damn 40, 60 years. Or as you want to say, the last 100 years. You see what I'm saying? No one else. You, even if you take the diaspora, they have had one or two leaders throughout history. You know what I'm saying? But when you, uh, the diaspora, or either Africa, but just think about just in the 20th century alone, the amount of people that we have had, and just the last amount of prairie of scientists as far as Dr. John Henry Clark. And you, and you, can, you can even in, include anybody that taught a certain knowledge, Minister Louis Farrakhan, Khalid Muhammad, Imam Esau. We're not getting into whether people went to the stray or whether they were a certain amount of a cult. We're not dealing with that. We're just saying still there's a certain amount of knowledge other than damn bullshit preacher. Yeah. See what I'm saying? But no one has had as much privy to much information as, as we had here. So the gathering is here. Now the gathering that they're talking about as far as those last ascended masters, that's the black people that is treaded into advanced fields of knowledge other than some stuff that you only had in the 60s. So... The stuff that we have been engaged in in the last 10 years, from the Afrocentric thing to the resurgence of the Nation of Islam, the reintroduction of Noble Two Ali's material, Honorable Elijah Muhammad's material, other people is doing things out here, you know, Imam Esau and other people, you know, no matter whatever little click they got, doesn't matter. They're introducing something other than orthodox religion. You see what I'm saying? and mamby pamby old bullshit ass uh, uh, Christian bullshit religion, which was the first phase, now it served its purpose. You gotta realize Richard Alley, Henry, Richard Alley, Henry Highland Gardner, and those wave of preachers, they were there to plant great ground when there was no other knowledge aboard. But as anything else, once it burns out, that becomes counter-revolutionary. And that's what has happened over the past 30 years of the church has become counter-revolutionary and it is actually a hindrance to the struggle. But now we're talking about we have got all of our knowledge now in some form or reason from the history to the metaphysics to deep into the occult. That's what I deal with. We have now got, uh, got just about all of our knowledge recovered and that is the gathering. So we are actually, so, no, so, so now, no matter what the cracker is doing and he is doing rituals, we're going to get into that in a few minutes. Whatever we do is whatever matters in the damn universe. The cracker is only just, his rituals only add to keeping his structure in place. It can't add to anything outside of the actual earth plane or the universe because he's not from that. He's only trying to keep a system that's crumbling anyway. That which did not come from something can never attain that. You see, they said that the white boy is incapable of salvation. They said he cannot be, he cannot gain salvation because he's not capable of it. Which means salvation is a process of the soul. Because he doesn't have the soul, he cannot be salvaged. You see what I'm saying? So, we are the only thing that matters, and us today, the few black people that's, that's conscious now, that's still struggling, you matter more than anything, because as you know, notice, in the last five years, it's almost taboo. 
not just to talk shit about the white man. It's not, it's almost taboo not to be with the white man. Because if you look at most of the people, I mean all, just look at the interracial shit that's just, just, just gained ground over the last five years. We're not talking about the last 20 years, we're just talking about the last two or three years. This shit is out of control. You see what I'm saying? How nobody can say nothing about the damn devil no more. You see what I'm saying? So we're talking about, for the mere fact that you have seen 99.9% .9 of all of our people deaf, dumb, and blind, not no 85%, this shit is 99.9, .9. there's only less than 1% of the people conscious on the planet now. Because you are seeing 99.9% .9 of our people just, just dummified by this doggone European doggone structure, that means that whatever you do is even more powerful. Because it's more concentrated. You see, the, the, it's not worn thin, where you got a whole bunch of people into something and everybody's lukewarm, bullshitting and scattering the energy. <laughs> For the mere fact that you are concentrated and we're talking about few and far between, you see what I'm saying, means that in actuality, that's the way it's supposed to be. So I come to Trenton and all, and we got a smaller crowd. I don't even deal with that shit no more. I don't even give a damn about whether I pack the place. That's not the point. The point is who we got up in here is who the fuck I was supposed to come see. See what I'm saying? Not like I, you know, not like I 40, 50, 60 people, 70 people. Although, although, when, when, uh, although I'm gonna have a lecture in 19th in Atlanta and it's gonna be jam packed. You see what I'm saying? But then again, I'm, that's my home and a lot of people are, are and, and because there's nobody else down there speaking now. So whenever I have one, it's really packed, so... And on the other hand, I'm like this, whoever comes, that's who the hell I'm supposed to speak to. See what I'm coming from? That's the gathering, that's the concentrated part. So the lecture in Atlanta, or the lecture that, that we do in some other place in, in like, and like I'm going to L.A. soon, it's going to be a huge crowd. But we know the huge crowd, it's only going to be about the same amount of people in this room that's really the ones I'm coming to speak to. The rest of them just to put on the show, fill it up so some people can get paid and the financial shit to pay for the plane ticket and all that stuff. You see, so we use them as the fill-in. You see what I'm saying? So it's just like an army, we put the first crew out there and stuff. That, you know, the first crew out there. Now that's, that's ancient science, so you gotta go rent the movie, The Big Red One. The Big, the, the big Red One with, um, what's my man's name, um? Lee Marvin. Lee Marvin and Mark Hamill. It was like four of them. And they used to use the imagery as, as blocking. Because these four moments was the one that said, we're going to stay alive through this war, so we're going to use everybody else as a damn human shield. And the whole movie, they killed up down by three or four platoons, but them two or three niggas that say they're going to stay alive. That, that's common. To, that, ain't just, that ain't nothing wrong with that. That's common denominator on the priesthood. John Henry Clark told you that, that, the, that, 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 that in the priesthood, they always have several, several decoys. You see what I'm saying? So we're only interested in the thoroughness of, of it all. You see what I'm saying? So right now we're changing the energy to bust up a damn ritual, a major ritual that started today. We'll get into it in a few minutes. I know what the crack are doing. He started a major ritual today. He started the other one in August. One before that in last September. So this whole Monica Lewinsky impeachment shit is a damn ritual. On the other realm, trying to stop the forces that's predicted in this book, Nostradamus 1999. We're only a few weeks from 1999, a few days damn near. Uh, you know, a few days from 1999. Now the key is you're not gonna get it because you think, because see, he doesn't realize, which I'm going ahead of myself. Uh, I'm going ahead of myself, but I might even backtrack. He's thinking it's some Arab over in the Middle East. So that's why they over there trying to blow up some shit, trying to stop the great king of terror, this dude to come and kill their ass, when it's us. A group of individuals talks about it even in the watch. It talks about it even in the Book of the Dead. You see what I'm saying? And it's, and, and, and it's interesting that I'm talking to you because when you look it up in the hieroglyphic dictionary, it spells my name, H-E-M-M-I-T. Yeah, H-E, instead of I-T-T, -T, it's H-E-M-M-I-T. It's in the hieroglyphic dictionaries. 
and it means a group of spirits that will be living in the last days. The Hemet spirits are the Hemet. It's either called the Hemet spirits or the Hemet spirits. You see what I'm saying? Which, which I was born with this name, so I didn't change it to this thing. And I'm not trying to make no claim that I'm the Messiah or you all follow me, you know, none of that kind of shit. We're not talking about that. I'm just trying to give you a description just so happen my name, it happens to be my name. And it talks about a class of beings, or it's also called Kim spirits, which means black. The word Kim means a class of stars. And every man and every woman is a star. That's what you are. S-U-N of God. Instead of S-O-N. That's that old... It was changed to S-O-N based on patriarchy to try to wipe out the damn woman. And, it's, and wiping out the woman is to try to kill the feminine energy because it is the feminine energy and it's not no mothering shit. It ain't no mothering in love. It's the pure violence of this feminine energy. Pure ass whipping violence. Head hair rule, it is pure hatred and anger, which is the divine shit we talking about, the white man telling you not to hate. We'll get into that too. We're gonna deal with it tomorrow on the theology of hate. Ain't no shit I made up. So don't think all that nigga that ain't gone fool. I'm telling you, the shit that you feeling and you saying fuck this shit, that's the God in you telling you what time it is. Including fuck niggas too, cause that's who you get mad with most of the time, cause niggas is fucked up too. As a matter of fact, all bullshit aside, I hardly have any confrontation with the damn white man because he, other than the regular racism, and that's been going on since we've been here. You're used to that shit, and we got to understand that the white man is doing what he's designed to do. Don't get mad at him for doing what he is designed to do. I'm upset with black people for having all this potential and don't want to do shit and don't give a damn, don't want to be nothing related to themselves. You see what I'm saying? So either way we talk about this psychology of hate is a certain spiritual energy that we're talking about right here. So, uh, 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 right here. So we're going to pull our basins. Also, too, we got to get out of this childlike people shit. We are a childlike people. So I might come in and do some profound stuff, but say if one or two curse words and... A person dwell in on that, like the like you say the sister was gonna buy my tape and she heard me curse. Like, I don't want that. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Cause we are a childlike people. That's what children do. Children can't get nothing, but if you curse one or two times, they'll always pick up on what's called. They're like when we took Spanish for the first time in high school. The first thing you do is learn all the cuss words. That's my cooler. Kiss my ass. Domina chuchu. Give me some pussy. That's it. You know, shit. We learn all that bullshit. You see it. Uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, you know. That's the first thing we ask. What the cuss word is? Best Macula. <laughs> about the best Macula. <laughs> you see, that's a childlike spirit, and black people are reduced to childlike spirits in slavery. So therefore, we're gonna only gonna pick up on the things like I was. I, I, I was in New York and did this whole major lecture on all this profound stuff. And the brother came and said, "Man, it was awesome." But um, I'm just interested. You kept saying nigger. I'm like, okay, well, we'll get into the, con you know, there's the Saul Negro, which is the black, black son, the Negrito, which is the blackening stage. We're talking about an ancient word, uh, the, the ancient word Necronomicon, the book, the black book, all this time. I said, but the point is, I'm not even going to explain that. I can't explain that. I say, but the point is, look at all that damn knowledge we just, we just went through for the last three, four <laughs> hours, and you only pinpointed on some bullshit. An argument that you done had the last 20-something years? You didn't learn nothing, I'm saying. I said, that's what's more concerned. I'm more concerned about that. That's the tragedy to me. That you, you come into a place, it's like, you know, Collett came into a place, and this was the first time that most of the people at that time, about 10 years ago, ever read, heard the King Alpha Plan, the Rex 82 King Alpha Plan. And he read the King Alpha Plan, and he said, God damn. So at the end of the lecture, some woman stood up and said, we need to be more consistent. What the hell are you talking about? Well, you said the word God damn. Now, this is an educated black woman <laughs> in her damn 40s. Or 30s or whatever. I'm like, this man just told you these people coming to kill your ass, and the only thing you're dwelling in on is goddamn? That's because we are childlike people. That's the difference. 
We're pathological grown-up children at large, permanent children. You see, and we dwell on the small, mediocre thing. That's why you ride a damn bus. You'll see that, you'll see that, you, you ride a bus, you get on it, you'll see a white person on there, city bus. See white people on there, you'll see um, um, Hispanic people on there. These people ain't got no shoes and shit. And all, and they'll be in there, and they'll be chilly. Be some nigga in there singing. You see what I'm saying? Because we addicted to certain pathologies. You see what I'm saying? And we don't understand that certain things, we, oh, we go out to the mall now. And, and, and they got people out there and all, and uh, they go out to the mall thinking they're going to get found. So they got a group of the doo-wop groups like boys and men. They got about 400 of these people, and they just are singing and shit. We got to get out of all that bullshit, because most people, that's all they expect us. You see what I'm saying? When they, had a, when, they had a, when they had that survey with black people, the elementary school, white kids and black kids, and it was, it was a survey on how, how white kids think, what they think of black kids, not what... Black people think of white children because we think of them as being God. But it was a survey of what white children think of their elementary school. I think of elementary or junior high school, I think it was like, you know, sixth and seventh grade, sixth, seventh, and eighth. And they say, well, what do you think of black people? They say, well, they're good at sports. You know, obvious shit. They like their hair. The women, they like their hair. Because we, 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 we are preoccupied with fucking hair. You see what I'm saying? That's why if you see black women, you see them, they, if they got that perm, I guarantee you, you don't have to be in their sight for four seconds and they're grabbing onto that shit. You see, it's almost that they've done it so much until it's almost a reaction. You know how you scratch someplace so long until it becomes a common reaction? So you do it without thinking about it. They're always grabbing their hair. You see, so they like their hair and they like to sing, they like to dance. The same old basic shit we've been doing since goddamn buck dance days. Because we are a childlike people. And we think it's talent. No, the talent has been gone. We ain't producing no talent. Most of that shit is bullshit now. The music is horrible. All of it. Not just the rap. All of it. If you really listen to it, it's horrible. We're not producing nothing that we produced before. All that stuff is, you know, they got six or seven women groups and all of them sound horrible. And You know what I'm saying? It's like even when I, when I bought your girl, and she's artist of the year, um, uh, uh, your girl, um, from the Fugees, um, Lauren Hill. Lauren Hill, but if you listen to her, Lauren Hill can't sing what four nickels. Oh, I say this shit ain't shit. I like that. I say that. Wait a minute. After a while, and the uh, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, you know all that old bullshit. We ain't producing nothing. Now, it's, it's, you think I'm? This is all in the scheme of things. But we are a childlike people that we got to get to a high level. At least with us, because this, st this stuff is over. You don't believe nothing. I'm not here telling you. See, I'm not going to espouse to to make a better day for black people. That ain't happening. So we cut through the bullshit, so we don't have to come back here thousands of times again thinking the earth going to get better for black people. That's not happening. First of all, I'm looking at black people at a new light now. We are actually an obsolete people in the white man's society. These, I mean, these crackers is on a whole nother damn level. I'm, I'm not, believe me, I can say this shit about black people because I talk shit about the white men. We're going to go into this Yaku thing again tomorrow on some new evidence on the Yaku thing <coughs> tomorrow. But I can talk this shit because I tell you the white man is the fucking fucked up uh, enemy or the devil or the beast or whatever you want to call it. So that way I can be critical with black people so I'm not like no... Uh, or uh, 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 some, some old Republican motherfucker for telling you, we, we, are we looking at a critical analysis of black social pathology and behavior and all right, uh, and, and black social pathology and behavior. So my point is, it's almost like overnight we have become obsolete. Now we know the white man is behind the stuff, but my point is, I'm saying this particular thing because there's something divine in what I'm saying as if when you realize that there's no future for you, you can get to the next plateau. It is only when you realize that there's no future to you, when you, to you that you can go to the next plateau or still be bouncing around here talking about we don't own this and we don't own that. We're never going to do that. We're never going to own it. Number one, number one, we are not advanced enough to own it because we are sick in the head. Number two, on top of that, we got an enemy that's going to make sure that we don't want it. 
Number three, we got an enemy that we don't know our damn enemy no more. Most people don't suspect that the white man is their enemy. Whenever the white man made you embarrassed to talk about racism, he got your ass. So the masses of the people are finished. But then again, there's something divine in that because that's what is prophesied. When all is lost, that's when it comes. The guy Kafka, Frank Kafka, Franz Kafka, there's an article in the book, the, the, the Messiah text, which is the Jewish Messiah text, which they took from the ancient, not the Jesus Christ or the Christianity thing. That's the Roman. But we're talking about what the black Hebrews thought of the Messianic thing in the Messiah text, Raphael Patti's book. And in there, as a Franz Kappa said, the Messiah will come when there's no longer a need for one. Which means that this particular plane, this particular plane, the Messiah, the act itself, or when it comes, this particular plane has to be over. So we're talking about now having a group of people that look beyond this bullshit. Because it ain't happening. Let's be, so once you get that in your head, then you can go further. You see what I'm saying? You can go further on what's really going on here. You see what I'm saying? Now, looking further, my main thing is to give the science of what is all beyond that and what is the actual part of looking forward to that. And then basically, that's what I've been doing since I've been lecturing. But even more so now, and, and now is the most critical time because never before in history do you realize that we got a people that is impeaching. This is what Honorable Elijah Muhammad said. You will know the end when the infighting starts among themselves. When self accuses self, when the infighting starts among the people who rule in you. Now, whether they doing it for a ritual, because a lot of this stuff is fake, it doesn't matter. For the mere fact that they got to even put it to you that they got to impeach a damn president means that there's something happening bigger. And they got to give it to you that way to distract you. Now, I brought the mind control books up the last time. We got enough here. The books is out of print, but thanks to this particular place, we got them. And the first rule of mind control is to distract the distraction. If you distract them, it leaves the whole mind open, the whole subconscious mind open, and you can rule them. So whenever they want you not to tap into something, it's distraction. That's the first rule of mind control. So that's the first two pages of the book, which the book is more relevant now than it was written 10 years ago, 10, 15 years ago. Right. It's right on time. If anybody took, I, took, I brought the book up last time. If anybody is uh, taking advantage of looking through the damn book, you know what I'm talking about. This shit is right on time. You can't put it down. This shit be dropping. It's head heavy. You see what I'm saying? And you take that book and you take four movies and put them together as a series and you really got some shit. So you take that book, read that book, then go get Running Man on a Schwarzenegger. Yeah, yeah. And then go get, see they, they made them in series but they separate them about two years apart. That way you don't catch on. So they take Running Man on a Schwarzenegger and Total Recall on a Schwarzenegger. You put them together, it's an actual manual. Then you go and get Demolition Man, um, uh, uh, Sylvester Stallone. Two years apart, you go get Judge Dredd. They, they're made to go together. You get the full volumes and shit, and you will see it all in visual. Everything is in the damn book. <clears throat> We're going to get into that in a few minutes, especially the Judge Dredd thing. Yeah. But it's straight up mind control, you see. But this is the key right now, and if they can distract you, they got you, you see. So let's do some libation right quick to get the guards there, <coughs> or the energy right. Because who was I heard a lot of hollering outside. What the hell was that? <laughs> Somebody out there acting a fool? Yeah, that's Oh, 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 there's children. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right, then. That's excusable. I thought it was grown people, because see, <coughs> the last couple, the, the, the last time in, in Atlanta, the last two times I spoke there, there's always some crazy stuff going on on the outside while I'm speaking. And then I figured it out. That it, we, we, I spoke there from 95 up to 90, 98, and the energy was all right. And then the energy, and they, 
they, they was constantly bombarding the place with energy, and then when the energy got real bad in the place, then the bullshit broke through. And we could no longer stay there anymore, so the place closed down. So we got to right, the bullshit started happening when another place opened up, you see. So, uh, uh, you know, so, so I just thought it was like that. But if the children, that's understandable, that's some good energy anyway. You see, but then again, on these new damn children, I don't know. <laughs> that's another shit, too. I need to talk about it right quick before I get it off my mind. Right now, we'll give God says in a few minutes, but we got to deal with this, too. First of all, we, first of all, we know it's over. Because we're talking about a child now. Children used to have a, even though they weren't afraid of adults, that you had a certain fear of adults. When you get in the presence of an adult, you had a certain shameless about you. You might tell the damn devil, but you didn't do it around grown people. Now you got a child, it could be in the mama arm, can't even walk in it, don't even feel you, and it'll hit you. Because the new mama don't realize that that was taboo in the ancient world. You don't never strike out at a damn adult. They'll hit you now, and the new mama thinks that that's cute because she's a baby having babies. So all of a sudden, because you got babies having babies, it has led to a whole culture of a breakdown science, man, whereas you talking about some damn, we say, oh, them just the new, so that's some bullshit. This shit is out of hand. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about juvenile delinquents. I'm talking about children that don't, that can't distinguish you being an adult. You understand where I'm coming from? You being an adult and other children, they don't know the difference now. And, it's, and not only that, we're talking about a people that if they commit an act in front of you, the mama don't chastise it. So you be talking and all, and she has to stop. You she talking to grown people, and the child want to get in on the conversation, and she has to stop her conversation with a grown person just to answer this damn, well, uh, that shit didn't happen back in the day. Yeah. First of all, you don't open your fucking mouth when grown people talking. <laughs> Children's supposed to be seen and not heard. You think that's cruel, but these were doggone laws and stuff that we had to do because we were a dead people out of slavery. So we had to have strict codes and shit for the civil doggone fact. The white man was engineered us to go crazy in about five or six years after slavery. But we cultivated a culture based on discipline till it ended, till it ended up. The white man started copying our shit. He's saying that these people here to produce the culture till in actuality, they are more, more, more humane than us. You see what I'm saying? So now what we're talking about here, we're talking about there is no boundary between adult and child. Because the new mamas don't know and the new daddies don't know. But basically, you know, they don't know, they don't understand. So she's going to stop her conversation to go address him. You see what I'm saying? Back in my damn day, they'd have stopped the conversation to pick a nigga up ass, ass off the floor <laughs> and put his teeth back in his mouth. You see what I'm saying? That kind of stuff, we're talking about, kind of, so we're talking about raising animals. Raising doggone animals. You see what I'm saying? That kind of thing. You got some people that get on top of it, but a lot of people, a lot of the mothers, the younger ones, and the fathers, we, we just say mother because a lot of them, it's, 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 they left because the, the discipline ain't there with the father or whatever. But a lot of people, are left, even if they are together, they don't understand the concept that a child is a different entity and is supposed to have a certain amount of rearing. That's the common knowledge throughout history. Not, I feed my child, you drop off some damn food. Now you got an idea, drop off the food. I take care of my child, that ain't doing it. So my point is, we're talking about another and plus, okay, let's just say for the sake of argument, there are some very advanced and spiritual people, souls that, 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 that came back. You must understand, because it is a very advanced and spiritual soul, it has to take much, much more care based on the energy. I was a very advanced soul, but I was bad. But the difference between my bad is I was bad outside of my mama and them things. You see the face? I tapped the devil. You see what I'm saying? But around grown people, it's a whole different thing, you see. Like old drunk, well, drunk man came to the house, Pearly came to the house drunk. My mama say, nah, he out there drunk. She say, if he, she say, he might be drunk and he might be falling down, but you don't ever, ever say nothing to this man 
or I'm going to your ass. He's still an adult. I don't give a damn if he's sloppy drunk. You call me and I deal with it, but you 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 don't never say nothing to him. I don't give a damn if he's falling off the fucking porch. That's the kind of doggone camaraderie you had based on a certain discipline. You see what I'm saying? That's right. You know, not no, you see, you can't let, so the thing about it, you can't let shit pass. But so now we're talking about a people, if you saw what happened to the generation that just went through all this bullshit, what you think will happen to them ones that's coming up? You see what I'm saying? Them generic babies. You know what I'm saying? So this is some stuff we're talking about. All the more to tell you that this particular stuff is over. You got to realize. Ambalaj Muhammad said the key is that you got to believe in an end. You got to believe in the end. That's quintessential to, the, to, to this particular stuff. Because the white boy still wants you to think that this shit going to last forever. That way you consider his ass. See what I'm saying? Now, why couldn't he kill me? Because I was on the right track. You see, the white boy know all about me. They scared as shit. Because there's a certain energy field going to certain people. Because I'm not trying to make a better America. So even you got conscious people still trying to get back to Africa and make a better, make, make a, do all this. That shit ain't happening. To me, I want one thing and one thing, or I wanted the shit to be over. Because I'm in the right energy field on what cycle it is, he can't fuck with that because he can bring about that. Even if you kill the person, you can bring about that particular part. So they don't mess with me because I'm on the right cycle. I want it over. You see what I'm saying? So that's the difference between the other people out speaking and stuff and all, and they're giving you all this other stuff to en enhance your life. You, you had a, you living, you living around the damn cracker. I mean, the damn cracker got everything for you to keep you happy. So well, how much enhancing you need? That motherfucker got a damn station on every channel. And I grew up with fucking three. Three damn stations. ABC, NBC, and CBS. And that's all. <laughs> now that mom got a station on every damn channel and shit. Plus 300 more channels if you get the satellite dish. This man got everything for you to enjoy. We ain't trying to improve the quality of life. We trying to doggone get rid of this damn madness. That's the doggone drug out here. You got to understand the science on this, you see. So we're going to pull these libations, and we're going to get into this particular lecture. Amin Ra, I say Ka, I say Ba, I say Ab, I say Ku, I say Sahu, I say Kaz, I say Kabit, I say Kat, I say Sekim, I say Osea, I say Sut, I say Nu, I say Apit, I say Sut Nessi, I say John Nessi, I say Ra Nessi, I say Sut Nubit. I say Cthulhu, I say Azazel, I say Azatho, I say Hastar, I say Shibnigara, I say um, uh, uh, Nirla Hotel, I say Dagon, I say Dogon, I say Ama, I say Neama, I say Ba, I say Na, I say Nanala, I say Ka, I say Nomo, I say Ama, I say Yugaru, I say Yugaru, I say Digitario Stages, I say Izumu, I say Buzimu, I say Mozimu, I say Kamara, I say Kingu. I say Marambo, I say Rarimki, I say Muzimu, I say Vodo, I say Da, I say Seldo, I say Jodo, I say Fi, I say Yi, I say Fa, I say Mawa, I say Si, I say Magua, I say Lia, Lisa, I say Legba, I say Ishu, I say Papagede, I say Ogu Ferelli, I say Ogu Shango, I say Oladumare, I say Odudawa, I say Ososi, I say Olakun, I say Ishu, I say Akra, I say, I say Nothro, I say Maja, I say Sasaman, I say Mayamplam, I say Sasaman, I say Akarapan, I say Kimi, I say Sasaban, I say He- Prometheus, I say Ethemetheus, I say Ke- Ah, hold on. Newt, I say. I say Ain Sa, I say Sephra, I say Kava, I say Shakma, I say Baina, I say Chesed, I say Gebera, I say Tiferet, I say Hard, I say Yased, I say Malkut, I say Dark. One minute.
Bear with me. Ashe. Osea, Ashe, Aset, Ashe. Heru, Ashe, Raheru Kahuti, Ashe, Heru Raha, Ashe, Ha Sefi, Ashe, Sut Ha, Ashe, Sut, Ashe, Mim, Ashe, Patar, Ashe, Minibus, Ashe, Bath, Ashe, Beth, Ashe, Baal, Ashe, Baset, Ashe, Butchers, Ashe, Dudun, Ashe, Duamutep, Ashe, Seba, Ashe, Shekmet, Ashe, Sheba, Ashe, Selket, Ashe, Setek, Ashe, Set Amra, Ashe, Tetanin, Ashe, Sathis, Ashe, Upwarit, Ashe, Kimu, Ashe, Kimu, Ashe, Tachacha Chief, Ashe, Himu, Ashe, Himamit, Ashe, Hedheru, Ashe, Anpu, Ashe, Nebhurt, Ashe, Yima, Ashe, Odin, Ashe, Freya, Ashe, Balda, Ashe, Lachi, Ashe, Thor, Ashe, Freya, Ashe, Freya, Ashe, Sif, Ashe, Nethris, Ashe, Brahmin, Ashe, Brahmini, Ashe, Vishnu, Ashe, Ramachandra, Ashe, Shiva, Ashe, Ilasuda, I say Siva, I say Sita, I say Hanuman, I say Lakshmi, I say Jinsia, I say Damawalawedo, I say Bridget, I say Marasha, I say Adam Gurdi, I say Ogu Pirelli, I say Ogu Shango, I say Urzuli, I say Lekba, I say Edoedo, I say Zaka, I say Olafi, I say Oduduwa, I say O O. Obatala, I say Arunla, I say Ogun, I say Shango, I say Oshun, I say Legba, I say Imija, I say Arisha Oku, I say Oya, I say Lilith, I say Lilithu, I say Layla, I say Leviathan, I say Tiamat, I say Ishtar, I say Anana, I say Labu, I say Abu, I say the Sphinx, I say Harmaku, I say Harpacrot, I say Soot. I say on, I say shut on, I say shake on, I say shake on, I say uh, sell kit, I say sachet, I say. Uh, okay, hold on. Well, I guess that, well, that's the same damn thing over over again. So, uh, uh, to all God. David family, all my family members. One, two, three. Start calling out your family members. One, two, three. I shake, I shake. Ashe, 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 to all gods known and unknown, Ashe, to all ancestors known and unknown, Ashe, that's it. Just give me one little, one more pour with that glass. Ashe, uh, we're going to give a, a special shout out to, uh, this is a special a shout out to Brother Flip Wilson, Ashe, that just died, Esther Rowe, Ashe, that just died, Kwame Toure, Ashe, Somebody else just died too. Um, huh? Okay. Ashe. Um, uh, Ashe. And I'm going to dedicate this lecture to a brother by the name of Randy Brown, which I'm going to get into in a few minutes so you can understand who he is. Ashe. Let me explain this to you. I two lives. Like the two twins. It's interesting you said that because there's two lives. First of all, I come from a middle class family. My great-grandmama had 16 children, so since all the boys was college and all the girls were college, all the boys was preachers and all the girls was teachers, because that's all they used to could do. And so in the second generation, my mama and all, you know how it is when niggas get educated, the family gets smaller. <laughs> now that shit goes, so my grandmama got four children and shit, you know. Her grandmama, her mama had 16, so the family gets smaller. So anyway, basically, I was born with a silver spoon in my mouth. I ain't never wanted for shit. So, like I said before, I am on a, I was a person that grew up middle class on a pilgrimage to be poor. And so that's my lot in life and shit. And the reason why I can really come and say that I talk shit about the money and all that kind of stuff, because since I always had, I don't necessarily miss, miss nothing. You see what I'm saying and all. Because I've never not known not having. That's the, that's the thing uh, uh, about it. A good thing about that was this particular thing, too. Now, remember now, in the South and basically in the North at a certain time, we all benefited because across the street was a, was, 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 uh, brothers and sisters who did not have, right across the street. And the house, the house here, in the house there, you got to realize all the preachers and the teachers, everybody lived in the same black neighborhood. So the psychological aspect is, was, because Miss Shaw, my grandmama, was a school teacher and my mama was a school teacher, and they lived in the same damn neighborhood, and we all uh, commune with the same people, welfare, drunks, this, 
that every part of the society, the other people in the community automatically raised themselves up because they automatically had people in their families that were successful in the extended family. Now all, of, all the black people is educated done moved out now, so therefore the inner city brothers and sisters don't know nothing but the same kind of damn shit around them. You see what I'm saying? And that was the COINTELPRO and, and, and based on putting black people into the corporate world so that that shit can happen. So the, so, the, so the difference between the black people from the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, and even in the 20s and stuff is everybody can see a damn model. See, I'm going to paddle myself after the model to do better because you knew all the doggone so-called up with mobile people in the same community. You understand where I'm coming from? Now, on the other hand, because we was in this type of community, I had a, good, I had a friend named Randy Brown was the dialectically opposite from me, which means his family was so damn poor, we used to go in the house. They live in a little two-room house, and I swear to God, for every little dot of the stucco on this wall, that's how much roaches used to be running up the mall by the millions. Looked like a damn ant pile. And Randy, used, they used to wear the raggediest clothes, and I mean just, just dirt down poor. And everybody knew that Alberta Snow's children was the poorest people damn near in town. But here it is, not a school teacher boy. Randy Brown was my best friend, and I love Randy Brown. You see what I'm saying? And it didn't matter based on whatever the status was, you see. But now they always tell you that the worst damn children in the world is teachers and preachers' children. Okay? I was hell on wheels outside of the family. So I got the great growing up as far as knowing how to behave. But then again, on the other hand, I was doing all kind of shit. So I was an expert rogue or thief at the age of like seven or eight. Never stole nothing from black people, but I go on a motherfucking white person's stoke and come out with that shit. So I taught Randy Brown how to steal. He's a poor man, but his, his mama was, his mother was wholly sanctified. Holy sanctified, real, you know, you know, holy sanctified, you mean, but you know, she, she, you know how a lot of the holy sanctified people, they was really out there when they was out there. Them the ones that make their snarch Christian, the ones that's out there, you know, giving up ass and both draw legs. You know what I'm talking about. But anyway, she even said I was a loose woman and all, but she holy sanctified. <coughs> and that's how I learned most of the Bible stuff because I was a big time AME. Now that shit is. That's just, you know, you know, it was a, uh, uh, really the African method of principle in the 1800s was, was the black liberation organization. But by the time, by the goddamn 60s and 70s, and that shit was straight up <laughs> elitist Negroes. So anyway, I learned more of the, the, the die-hard fundamentalist concepts through Randy Brown and shit. Because his family, you understand what I'm saying? So now, but Randy Brown, when he got turned on to stealing the house, I just sit back. I didn't even have to steal no more because that mother could go on a store and we used to rip these crackers off. We put terror on the little town of Mullen, South Carolina. <laughs> so it was a phase that we was going through. So when I went to junior high school, a lot of the teachers and a lot of the stuff started kicking in and started getting a little serious. So I started getting away from a lot of things. And then by the time I got in high school, you know, I was into women and all that kind of thing, dressing and you know, the, all the other trappings or whatever the deal is. But what happened was Randy went to the eighth grade and because his family was poor, he missed a lot of days. Now, we, we met in 1968 in like the second grade and we missed a lot, he missed a lot of days. Now, this is a very key story. It's gonna get metaphysical in a damn minute. I'm gonna bring this motherfucker right home to what's going on now. So don't just think I'm trying to waste your time by telling you some bedtime stories. The shit gonna get heavy in a minute. So anyway, um, and I told a story in 1994, and who would ever know that the government would retaliate because of the story? So anyway, Randy Brown, we was in the eighth grade, and Randy Brown remained poor, whatever the deal is. But what happened was, is when Randy Brown got through on his head in wrestling, and he kind of went a little off for just a little bit, around 1977 or whatever the deal is. So anyway, when I met back up with Randy moved on the other side of town with his family. And when I met back up with Randy, Randy was already out of school because he had missed so many days, so he basically dropped out at like in, after, the, after the eighth grade. But Randy was still stealing. 
And you know, I had grown out of that stuff, you know what I'm saying, and all, you know. You know, because, you know, I, I was I was an expert until I, uh, Randy took over, and then I would let him do all the stealing for me, so I kind of got stale on the shit. So I was too scared I was going to get caught. You see what I'm saying? Because I had kind of like retired after the damn seventh grade. I let him do all the shit for me. So, <laughs> but it was a hobby. I mean, my parents, I had all kind of money. I just did the shit just to have it. It wasn't like I was poor and had to do the shit. It was a thrill of the stuff, you see what I'm saying? Anyway, what happened was is Randy was still ripping off. So, high school went on, and uh, his brother, which was a good friend of mine, came, and, and see, the thing about it, I was an artist, and Randy was an artist. And, um, uh, and, and so, after high school, I think I was in the 11th grade, his brother came up and said, man, they got Randy, man. Um, he bust in the house, and, you know, they got him. That was the first offense. Well, it just so happened, what was the fucked up thing about it was this. Just so happened it was some, some police officers that went on a rampage in the uh, in in the town, and they was robbing banks and stealing all kinds of stuff. They robbed the night deposit box. They was robbing, terrorizing, robbing all the stores. So just so happened a few months before the FBI came down and caught them, a few months before, Randy got caught breaking in this house, and the ju and, and and basically they pinned all the crimes in the town on him. So he got 18 years off the bat, first offense, 17. Two or three months later, they catch the real guys, but then again, a nigga in, a nigga in, they ain't gonna, re they ain't gonna reduce no sentence because they know the truth. So, it's almost like two different things. It's almost like the dark side and the light side. I go off to college and I have a time of my life and stuff to socialize and just everything, just, you know, just living it up in America is all this great shit, you know, and I'm just partying back and all, you know, just really, you know, um, just partying, you know what I'm saying, the girls, and this is basically, just a basically uh, fairy tale lifestyle. Meanwhile, this is the shit. The same time I'm in college, the whole time I'm in college, Randy is in jail for something he did on the first offense. So, because after I was in school, I learned how to use school as, a, as just a, just a, a, you know, after I got out and all, I, I learned how to use school as a place where you could just go and get three hots on a cot. So I learned how to do co college loans and shit. So I said, damn, I need to get to Atlanta. I'm, I was in Columbia, South Carolina. I said, I know what I do. I'll get back in school. And I'll get my three hots on a cot get in the dormitory and get me some damn free meals, and then I can go and get jobs and do all that kind of stuff. So I went another damn near three, four years. So anyway, it was eight years, and the day that I got out, the same time that I finished was the same time they let Randy Brown out. And Randy Brown did eight years. But remember now, he went in at 16 or 17, so when we, so what happened was, unfortunately, because he was wrongly accused and all, and he wasn't really a criminal, when he got in, he decided he was going to do good behavior, and he just didn't talk to nobody for eight years. Sad part about it is when I was getting ready to go to New York because I was designing shoes at the time, and I was going up to Fifth Avenue to, to pick out my shoes on the wall because I did the uh, Fall 88 line and Fall 89 line for this white boy, Roger Bowman, up in New York, this Jew. So I was really, I was really in the shit. You know what I'm saying? Getting ready to get a million-dollar contract. Had a, had the Jews going to give me $500,000. The Jewish family gonna get me fired because I was a new nigga. And when nobody doing this shit, I was literally hooked up before I walked away from it all. So I come home in between going to New York and they say Randy's out. So I meet Randy after seven, after eight years. But the problem is, because Randy didn't talk to anybody for the whole eight years, Randy regressed back and Randy, whatever Randy, whatever Randy went into prison as he came back out with the mentality of somebody that's 15 or 14 because he, because he, 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 in the same time he even regressed because even, even though he was 17, he didn't really function as most of the people at that time because of the simple fact he was very poor or whatever and all. Anyway, he didn't go through the puberty cycle, so he entered right at, back at the time where we were in junior high school. And although I'm like 20, uh, I'm like 26 at the time, he's like 28 because he's like two years older than me. We in, he ends up back like 14 or 15. So we had to teach him how to dress Randy. They don't wear them big butterfly collar shirts no more from the 70s. This goddamn 19, 
88. They don't wear that now, Randy. You know, Randy, you got to learn how to shave now, Randy, because you are an adult. So we literally had to teach Randy how to be a damn adult, and he had to grow up fast. Okay, scene shift. Around 1988, I start having some visions. So I start having some visions of the particular Egyptian temples that you see right there. Most of those particular temples. And I had this particular vision of, I'm having to go back into past and having to go back into ancient Kemet. Now, get into this particular space, and this before I got into any metaphysical stuff. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking this shit up in my head, and I didn't know it was visions the whole time, but it was so subtle and so a part of me, I'm saying, oh, I'm just, just thinking it's a man. But when I get behind the music, I would, this stuff start coming out. And I start seeing visions of these temples before I even really got deep into the art side of ancient Kemet or ancient Egypt and start finding the shit that I start seeing in visions. So this thing is I go back in time in this particular spaceship called the Kemetic Cosmic Kephra. Go back in time and I go back to ancient Kemet. Now, when I get back to ancient Kemet, because I'm thinking I'm going back in time, when I get back, when I land, I land in the damn desert, and what I see is the same damn ruins that I see that you see in Egypt now. And I'm a little upset. I'm saying because I don't, I didn't go back in time. I'm because I'm seeing the ruins. Meanwhile, let me show, hold your thing for a minute, and I'm gonna show you this. This is very key. That's why I brought these particular pictures. Meanwhile, the only thing that is there that is new is something that is called an Egyptian colonnade. Now this is an Egyptian colony. White man say we didn't have pie in Egypt. The black people, they didn't have pie. I told you about that the last time, didn't I? You know, the slumbo pie. There go your motherfucking pie right there. Or these are your pie right here called pylon. So we had the pie. Plus we had the pie. This is the fucking pie. Mm. Sure is. The eye of Heru. So pie equals melanin. Mm. So we got the pie. So going back to the story, this is very key because this stuff comes out and I just meant to tell you this story when I came up. Now going back to the story, only thing I see new in the desert where I was supposed to go back to Kimmy because he got in this ship spaceship that looked like a dung beetle. I went back. And the only thing new um, I see is this. Now, in, these used to have these big wooden doors. They don't show them in some of the things. But some of these used to have big wooden doors on them. Anyway, I'm in the desert and there's a big wooden door and this pylon standing up. And I, I recognize that it's, it's, it's new. But it's got a big chain around it. Meanwhile, I'm trying to break through the chain to get through the big wooden door. Otherwise, on the other hand, I look on this side and there's a slave shack with some black motherfuckers from slavery sitting on the front porch, trying, looking at me, trying to get into this door. Anyway, I break through the door. As soon as I open the door, just like that Wizard of Oz, she, you know, she opened the door and she and shit turned into color. Well, in this case, as soon as I open the door, it enters into the ancient world. Meanwhile, the people on the other side was looking. They could see me, but I couldn't see. And they was waiting for me to break through the door, open up the door, get through the chain. And as soon as I open the door, there's a loud cry. They start yelling and hollering because they realize that I got through. And then I just see all these thousands of black people in the ancient world, all black in this vision like you ain't never seen before. It's like it's almost like a whole different dimension because it was. Meanwhile, they picked me up and they put me on the shoulder because they're going to take me to the temple. And it's basically a temple look like this, a temple of Luxor to go see the Pharaoh. Meanwhile, I look back and the black family, the slave family that's sitting on the porch, they crying like a motherfucker because they're happy I got through the door. So, they take me in a procession up on the thing to go see the Pharaoh. 
because they're happy that a brother came back through time and it symbolized a slave returning to ancient time. So they taking me to the Pharaoh. I'm getting to the Pharaoh, and he's sitting up, you know, with the crook in the fail, in front of the temple with his queen or whatever. And I'm getting closer and closer, and when I get up on it, guess who the fucking Pharaoh is? Randy Brown. <laughs> Randy damn Brown. And the whole thing was that the whole thing is, is this brother was an ancient brother back in the day. It was an advanced person, now a poor brother that's in jail and he got out, got all fucked up through the system. Then I got a channel on later that he was an ancient person. We both was chilling as friends back in the day. Now the key to the thing is because I had to, to, to get to do what I had to do and basically going through life untouched. Not knowing any kind of, um, not knowing any, I see my crew from Philly came. <laughs> not knowing any kind of um, suffering, pain and suffering. Uh, uh, literally, the sacrifices that he did, even when we was in real life, is almost like my nemesis or uh, the antithesis of what you call the opposite of me. He was poor, I was middle class, and as a result, he took all the shit that if I had any pitfalls or any type of thing that might have happened to me on a tragic level, Randy was living that while I'm doing this thing here. You see what I'm saying? Now, the key is, the key is, is this. We, the key is, is this. I tell the story to New York, Atlanta, and a couple other places, but the story goes all over the country. About a year ago, he's in back in Mullen, working at this locker plant. You know, they kill hogs and shit, you know. Anyway, they call him in and tell him, we want you to clean up around the place. So they clean up, and he cleans up, and he moves the cash register, and he cleans up all the stuff. Then after he leaves, they go back in and rob the place at night. His fingerprints on the cash register, they set him up. They come and get him, and they put him back in jail last year, after eight years. And the spirit said, well, in actuality, they put him back and all because, number one, when you released about him being the Pharaoh, they got scared. That's them telling us the real deal shit. But then again, on the other hand, the spirit was like saying, it was the, the what you call the demiurge of the evil entities that are working against us. They did it anyway, thinking that they're trying to get you or trying to do something, and they don't understand he's doing the sacrifice for you. So the problem was, and I said this before that um, for the mere fact that I got a guy that I grew up with that's connected with me and everything that has happened to me on a grandiose level as far as now, my, my, my blessings is, is consciousness and, and getting more knowledge. The opposite has happened to him. So it's also the type of thing that I cannot not be in this particular doing what I'm doing and sticking to my guns because there's a motherfucker in jail right now sacrificing for my fucking ass. And that's the serious shit. So they came back and got him and put him back in prison on some bullshit and it was a setup. And at first I just thought, you know, they just set him up and I didn't realize. And then it came to me, wait a minute, this brother is doing some shit while I'm out here and he's the decoy so they can't get to me. You see what I'm saying? But when I told the story about him being the Pharaoh, they went to damn Mullins and got this nigga ass and put his ass back in jail. And the setup shit was the way the government had them to do it. You see what I'm saying? So that's why we got to dedicate the energy to him and send some energy to him. And based on this here, they can, uh, he can be released based on this energy that's going to come and do it. Because I'm going to get on the God's ass to tell them they got to go and do some shit. Because we got to demand that type of thing. But on the other hand, it also goes to say that this particular story is a little bit about you that have the privy to have this particular knowledge and privy to this particular knowledge. You ain't got time to be bullshitting because there's some motherfucker out there, whether you know it or not, he's sacrificing because of your ass. They take the many 
and sacrifice the many for the one and two damn sparks. You got to know what time it is. You see. And that's what's going on at this particular time. So now, let's deal with some stuff based on the lecture and based on what's going on right now. On what's going on right now. So we're going to deal with some hard copy right now. So, um, um, uh, so, uh, let's deal with some things that's going on. How many people saw the movie Siege yet? Now, you know the movie Siege is the King Alpha plan, literally worked out. Another movie to go see, white people jam-packed up in there to see is a movie called Bug's Life. <laughs> Gotta go see Bug's Life. And Bug's Life is about some ants in the first part of the summer, they work to get up food for the grasshoppers. And then the grasshoppers come and get their food in the next part of the summer, they work to do their own shit. About like black people. <laughs> but the key is it's about 15 grasshoppers or less ruling about 2 million motherfucking ants. Meanwhile, meanwhile, one ant stands up and challenges them. And as a result, the guy says, well, it's just one ant, won't you just, you know, it's no big deal. The guy said, look, next year to be two ants, next year to be three ants, four ants. He said, you got to realize we are only a few people ruling millions of them. And if they can ever find out that their numbers is greater, then it'll be all over. That's just like white people are my ruling all the fucking people on the planet. But all the people on the planet are divided because they don't realize that there are darker-skinned and brown-haired people of an ancient origin on the earth, including the lighter-skinned derivatives of ancient Asians and all that. They still, their land once had an ancient black person on that shit or ancient people. But they still thinking in actuality that this all this human race bullshit. And they can't under figure the stuff out. And the movie was about that because the ants never went, and let's, let's say, if they was inside your backyard, they would never go beyond that backyard. So they had no way of knowing, and that's the way they do us. They have no way of knowing that the solidarity is in numbers. Or knowing that they, if they just went to another place, they wouldn't have to doggone keep giving this grasshopper shit. But it's all in the movie. You no know, damn well, they ain't putting out nothing now that they ain't got no science in it. You got to understand that at this particular time. You ants the same way too? I think ants is the same way, but that's on video now. So, uh, that's on, that's on video now. So, um, you need to get that as well as small soldiers. Oh, yeah. The Gorgonites, which is black people, and the small soldiers, which is white people.